Well, good morning once again. Welcome to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heikem, and I'm so glad to be with you as we look at chapter three of Max Licato's book, Traveling Light. In chapter three, uh, Licato um, talks about, I'll do it my way, the burden of self-reliance. In other words, relying on ourselves when we should be relying on God. Of course, we're working our way through the Lord's, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Um, and today that is the, our, our focus. God is our shepherd. Um, I like how Lucado starts with this golfing illustration in case you haven't figured it out. He's an avid golfer. He loves golf. And so um, he uses lots of golfing analogies. Um, I love how he uh, talked about this this golfer who, you know, all he had to do was just hit a couple of nice shots, short, easy, uh, and put the ball in, and he would have won this this major national tournament. Um, but he chose to sort of take the risky route, thinking he knew better and could do better. And of course, he um, he didn't. He didn't do better. Um, Lucado talks about how come, you know, why why does that happen? Why do we do those things? Why do we think we know better? Why do we not trust, you know, what, what the experts say, what, what, the, um, what, what common sense would say, what God says? Why do we not trust that? Um, Lucado talks on page 23 about how he says, you know, listen, all I had to do was apologize, but I decided to argue instead. All I had to do was listen, but I had to go and open my big mouth instead. All I wanted to do was be patient, but I decided to take control instead. All I had to do was give it to God, but I wanted to fix it myself instead. Um, And so um, I want to talk for a moment about this idea of self-reliance. Why do we do this? Why is it that when we have a God who desires to shepherd us, to lead us, to guide us, to move us, that we want to be in control. We want to do those things. We think we know better. Um, on page 24, Lucado writes this. He says, couldn't David have thought of a better example rather than a sheep? You know, maybe something a little more powerful, something with some weapons. He Couldn't he have thought of a better example? I mean, surely he could have. After all, he outran Saul and outgunned Goliath. Why didn't he choose something other than sheep? How about the Lord is my commander in chief and I am his warrior? There, we like that a lot better. A warrior gets a uniform and a weapon, maybe even a medal. Or the Lord is my inspiration and I'm a singer. We're in God's choir. What a flattering assignment. Or the Lord is my king and I'm his ambassador. Who wouldn't like to be the spokesperson for God? Everyone stops when the ambassador speaks. Everyone listens when God's minstrel sings. Everyone applauds when God's warrior passes. But who notices when God's sheep show up? Who notices when the sheep sing or speak or act? Only one person notices. That's the shepherd. And that is precisely David's point. You know, the reality of self-reliance is that we do it because we want people to notice us. We want to be in control. We want to have people look at us and go, wow, you're so smart. I would have never thought of that. I would have never even even thought of that. You're so, how to, you know, we want people to fuss over us. And, and you might say, oh, no, I don't. I, I do not want to be that person. I don't want to be in the spotlight. But at some point, we all do. There are certain things that we just want to be known as good at. And we want to take control. And, and the problem of self-reliance is when we let that overtake our need for God. Um, and so Lakato talks about how, you know, we can't control our moods. We can't control our, our, our peace with the uh, with one another. We can't. Um, control our fears we can't and so that's a reason why we need a shepherd the very end of the chapter page 26 Lakato um, asked this incredible question that I want to use as our focus for the rest of this video why is it that the ones who most need a shepherd resist him so Why is it that the ones who most need the shepherd resist him so? Um, If you've got your your baggage worksheets handy, um, I would love for you to continue to fill them in. You can see I've filled mine in at the bottom here. I've got information on week two, information on week three, um, week three being this week. And here's 
a little recap. Last week, I asked you to think about why we carry unnecessary weight when we confine God to being less than he really is. So we talked about how we wonder if God is able, we question if God is powerful, we doubt if God really could or really would do something. Um, and we talked about that, how that impacts our lives. And, and this week, I want you to write down a couple more things on your sheet, and I'd like for you to kind of think through them and see how they apply to your life. The, the question I want you to write down today is, why do I resist him? the shepherd, God. Why do I resist him when I need him so desperately? Now you might want to say, I don't resist God. I want God. I desire God. Um, Yeah, in in your mind you think that, but in your heart? um, Here's the reason why we tend to resist so much. I think three reasons why. Um, I'd like you to write down these three words and then consider them for your life. The first word is control. I think we desperately want control. We desperately want to be in control of things. And so we don't want to give that control over to God. And we don't give that control over to God, then we are necessarily resisting him. We're saying, no thanks God, I got this. Go on to the next person. I think the second word is pride. We value pride so much. Um, a woman who came into my life um, as a grandmother figure uh, after my grandmother had passed away. She was a dear friend of my grandmother's, and she kind of just stepped into that role as grandma. Um, her name is Pauline. Um, she happened um, to catch her toe on her, on her Lazy Boy recliner, and she fell. Thankfully, she didn't hurt herself too badly, but she did mangle her glasses, and she gave herself a, basically a black eye. Um, Well, this happened, I think it was about Easter time, and um, we had a habit of picking her up for evening services for church, and um, uh, either my parents or I were due to pick her up, I think, for like a good Friday or Monday, Thursday service, and so this this fall happened like on Monday, and so for the rest of the week, we were kind of talking with her, and she's like, no, I'm not going to go to church, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go. I finally asked her, I said, Pauline, why why, why don't you want to go to church? You know, it's it's Good Friday or Monday, Thursday or whatever it was. And she said, well, listen, my pride won't let me go. And that's how we let pride impact our lives. It won't let us. We can't risk damaging our pride in ourselves. We value it way too much. The third reason that we resist Having a shepherd is out of fear. Now, that seems backward because a shepherd is supposed to protect the sheep, yeah. But we're afraid that if we give that kind of control over to the shepherd, we may have to recognize, we may have to admit that we were wrong about something. And who wants to be wrong? So I think three reasons that we resist the shepherd is, first of all, control. I want that control. Secondly, pride. I value that pride. Thirdly, fear. I don't want to be wrong. What about you? How do each of these things apply to your life? Do you find places that you don't want to give up control, that you um, value your pride so much that you are afraid you might be wrong about something? I'd encourage you to write them down in your sheet and then make a list throughout the week. Um, It can be somewhat depressing when we think about these things, the ways in which we do this, but it's so helpful, so beneficial for us to get it back in perspective, how we desperately, desperately need a shepherd, and God intends to be that for us. I hope you guys have a great week. Hope you're enjoying this book, and I look forward to seeing you next week as we look through chapter four. Have a great week. Bye-bye.